every month tons of weird stuff happens in the world of gaming and every month game ranks puts it all together points at it and has a big old chuckle hi folks it's falcon and today on game ranks the weird gaming stories of january 2024 so let's start off with a pretty cool one number 10 is this PlayStation tablet edition that YouTuber DIY Perks made. You may know this guy from making the first PS5 Slim. He did that about a year ago. It's sitting at 19 million views. This guy came out seven days ago. It's sitting at 2.6. I'm sure it'll probably eventually pass the PS5 Slim because it's a much more novel idea that frankly is actually a lot more realistic than the PS5 Slim build he did uh, because it uses fans as opposed to a liquid cooling solution which is absolutely nuts. But this guy does such a great job with these things. It's really legitimately cool and insane that anybody would even think of it. If I were Sony, by the way, I would call him now. This is a great idea for a product. When he demonstrates it, he talks about how it kind of makes it into a social thing because you're not bound to a TV. You could have people sitting at the dining room table playing PS5 games together. And I love that idea. It's such a great idea. At number nine, somebody put Nemesis into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Although, honestly, I kind of can't tell if it's a modded game or if it's a 3D animation or what. But it's pretty funny and honestly seems like a fun idea. It's very weird because Nemesis, uh, as represented here, just completely destroys all of the balance of the game. There is no point in resisting Nemesis in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's big, he's bad, and he's you know, also got a bazooka. I kind of think it's a 3D animation personally because it's a multiplayer game and this kind of mod would completely destroy the multiplayer game. And I find it difficult to believe that I think repercussions would come pretty quickly if it's not just an animation. But either way, I mean, it's funny and it's fun. And um, maybe Capcom should be paying attention a little bit. At number eight, uh, this brilliant dude named Lanny Smoot is an inventor at Disney that has recently become the second Disney employee to be inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Uh, Lenny showed off in a video a floor that pretty much makes virtual reality a completely different thing. It's a floor that you can walk around on. Not just you, multiple people can walk around on independently and it accommodates all the movement. Meaning, you know, like the primary problem of VR is solved by this floor. Uh, he talks about a bunch of different applications from like VR to dancing. Interestingly enough, I mean, this guy has accomplished a ton of stuff with Disney, too. He's the guy who's made the actual extendable lightsabers. I mean, they aren't real per se, but they're the most real looking one possible. I mean, this guy's an incredibly accomplished inventor, and there really just aren't that many people who can say they've done as much as this man, which is, of course, why he's being inducted in the National Inventors Hall of Fame. And it's it's just badass. At number seven, according to some uh, data-driven analysis, CSGO, a game that was released in 2012, made Valve about a billion dollars last year on skin case openings alone. Now, I I'm honestly going to just flat out say I don't entirely understand what's going on here, but I do know that skins can go for crazy amounts of money. I like me some CSGO and I've seen some crazy stuff in it, but I'll say this isn't something I partake in. So when I think about this free game that I play and have never put any money into it ever at all, when I think of that making Valve over a billion dollars in 2023, I'm just sitting here thinking like, that's insane. It's insane to me that people don't try to replicate that business model as games as a service, as opposed to just making these crappy, endless single player games that are just not good. People hate them. And there's no way those types of games are making companies that kind of money, is it? Maybe I'm naive here. Valve just kind of has a money machine going here though. That's, that's freaking insane. And number six, I don't know what the hell is going on with here, but like a dragon infinite wealth, uh, they're going to have their new game plus locked behind a $15 upgrade, which, you know, very normal, not strange thing to have just included in a game. It's not the only thing you pay the 15 bucks for. Uh, it comes as part of the master vacation bundle, which includes like a Pokemon style mode, which shame on sake of her plagiarism. <laughs> um, also includes a bonus dungeon, 
some outfits, some resort guests, etc. But that's weird. That's just a weird thing to lock behind an upgrade. A $15 upgrade on top of that. I mean, you don't have to just pay $15 for it either. You can go up to the Ultimate Edition and pay $40, and that comes with a new game plus as well. But, I mean... That's just that's such a standard, normal-ass feature. I, I don't understand why you would lock that behind um, money. But, the, you know, just saying that sounds stupid. Of course I understand why they would lock it behind money to make money. Still weird. And number five, some 13-year-old kid beat Tetris. Uh, he is the first human being to do so. Tetris is not designed to be beaten, or at least that's what people assumed. It's what I assumed. I've played Tetris, and Tetris has beat me. I love Tetris. I'm actually very, very good at Tetris. I have won in Tetris 99 multiple times. So there. But uh, I've never beaten Tetris. And this kid, Willis Blue Scooty Gibson, beat it. And what we're saying as beat is playing it at the highest levels until it crashes. I'm not going to get into the details of how this works, but a bunch of ridiculous crap has gone down, which has allowed people to go well beyond where it's impossible for a normal human being to beat Tetris. And, I mean, the win condition for Tetris has essentially been created by pushing it far beyond where it was ever designed to go. Like, the game actually just starts deteriorating once you get to a certain point, and we're regarding beating it as getting to the point where it deteriorates beyond playability. Or, as many know it, crashing. And number four, um, GameShark is releasing a new controller that uses AI to predict your next movement, but it also uses sensors to adjust the sensitivity of joysticks, remaps itself based on your playstyle, and allegedly makes it so that combos are easier to pull off. I don't really know what the hell is going on with the Shark controller. I don't know if it's some kind of a scam product or if it's the real deal, but it sounds... I mean, pretty cool from some angles, and it sounds pretty not great from some others. Now, from an accessibility angle, this is a fantastic idea. It makes it so that the game itself isn't necessarily the driving force behind the difficulty of play. In theory, that could be changed by the controller, which is, you know, on, like I said, the accessibility side of things, cool, but maybe not as cool in terms of the skill side of things. Like, obviously, especially in competitive gaming, something like this cannot be allowed. I don't know. If it turns out to be a real, like, well-designed thing that gets widespread use, I, I, it's going to be interesting what it causes. It will be very weird. Moving on to number three, Pal World. Oh my God, is Pal World a hell of a thing. It's caused a ton of controversy, and to everybody else, it's a great Pokemon with guns style survival crafting game. Yes, it's derivative. No, that doesn't matter. It's a hell of a lot of fun. It's clearly legally distinct as Nintendo took down one of the mods that inserted the Pokemons into the game, implying they are paying attention to it and realize that there's not really a lot they can do because it's not Pokemon. They put out a statement which doesn't say it, but to me just kind of sounds like, hey, stop telling us about Pal World. But something that's probably talked about not enough is... The fact that the gun animations were made by a 20-year-old dude who only graduated middle school and was working part-time at a convenience store. This self-taught, scrappy dude, they just found him by chance, hired him, and actually found him housing. The main guy, Mizobi, said, sure, the team could have learned how to do these animations given time, but I wanted someone working on Pal World to be obsessed with guns. I'm so glad that I met him. Like, part of the reason why I think Pal World deserves to be lauded is just it is a perfect example that anybody can make games and the point of the game is just to be fun. I'm not telling you that it's the best game out there or anything. It's got a long ways to go and it's in early access, but it's just fun as hell and it's got a really interesting story behind the development of it. And number two, the developers of The Day Before, which, by the way, was really a shit show. I don't know if you remember that controversy, but it kind of landed where everyone expected it to a couple years ago when they didn't believe it was real. The developer, Fantastic, said the developers were not at fault for how bad the game was. It was actually bloggers and content creators 
who triggered a gold rush by profiting off of a hate campaign against the failed game. And, you know, on some level, they're not wrong. When something goes that badly, yes, there is always a content gold rush. We try to cover things that people are talking about, and when people are talking about something going horribly wrong, we try to get to the bottom of it, because that's basically what we're supposed to do as curious human beings who are talking about things we're interested in. I'm obviously not a human being, I am a bird of prey, but that's besides the point. I think it needs to be said that this is a very, very silly excuse, though. I'm sorry, like, the reason why the day before was bad was because of the developers. They had years to make it good. They had money. I mean, they're a traditional game company. They didn't crowdfund this thing. But for whatever reason, and it ain't bloggers, that's what they put out. Yes, people did hate your game, and that made for good content, but there's a real easy way to avoid that. It is called creating realistic expectations, managing them, and delivering on them. They did none of that, and it's weird that they're trying to blame something that isn't the fact that they didn't do any of that. And finally, at number one, I alluded to this in number three because that was also a Pal World point, but there was a modder who put the actual Pokemon into Pal World. And although he didn't release the mod, he did release a video of the mod and Nintendo took that down. You see, Nintendo is aware that there are going to be things that look like Pokemon but do things a little bit differently. Pal World is one of those things. Digimon is another one of those things. Arguably, Pokemon is one of those things in relation to Shin Megami Tensei. But that brings us into a longer and weirder discussion that has no place on a hobbyist games channel. <laughs> to me, what this says is Nintendo knows exactly what they can and cannot sue, and Pal World is not one of them. However, a modder putting their IP into Pal World is definitely somebody who is doing something that they have control over. The modder Toasted Shoes said he still plans to publish a video about the mod, but also it will comply with any copyright notices from Nintendo. They said, we would love to complete the mod pack and release it for free to the public. However, we're playing it by ear and don't want any legal troubles because why would you as a random modder, a person, maybe a small team of two, three people, I don't think you would ever want the weight of Nintendo on your shoulders, and it sounds like Nintendo is more than happy to pull that trigger. However, the monsters of PAL world will likely continue pulling triggers within the world of PALs because they haven't said crap about it other than just acknowledging it exists. I guess enough tattletales emailed Nintendo about the game that's doing incredible that nobody in the gaming world hasn't heard of. But eh, whatever. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.